Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 minute podcast. Today should be interesting. Got Tara Steinwade on the on the phone, on the uh, oh, microphone. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Jackson. Hello. Hello. So I think we get straight into the questions. We've got a lot of questions to ask Tara and it's going to be nothing off limits. And if she doesn't want to answer, she's going to say not answer. <laughs> she, That's right. <laughs> she said to me last night, what if I don't want to answer one? I said, well, don't answer it. But I'm sure being as blunt as you are, you will probably find an answer somewhere. Yeah, I hope I don't overshare because oh, I, yeah. t- I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> Bit of word vomit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go. Jackson's going to ask the questions and I'm going to butt right out of it. Mm, okay. Um, Tara, do you ever think I'm one good day away from a bad one? Me, myself, that I'm one good day? Away from a bad day. I don't know what that question is. Yeah, exactly I don't really means. understand what I, that means. I thought I knew what it meant when I read it and then I said it out loud and I was like, I don't really know what I'm that not means. Sure. Yeah, no. I'm not too sure, sorry. <laughs> Star sign? Libra. How did you and Matt meet? We met at work. I was working at McGrath in the finance team and then I ended up being Matt's PA for a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then the story just goes on from there. Yeah, yeah. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> when do you spend time with Matt as as he's either working out or doing his routines? Uh, we spend most of the day Sundays together. I do see him obviously every morning and every night. It's not like a set time that we'll eat breakfast or dinners together, but some nights I see him all night, other nights I don't see him at all. He's a very busy man, <laughs> but he does call me most days throughout the day to check in. Yeah, I call, stay my, I call, I call a lot. Yeah. Like, well, it depends. Yesterday I only called once, yeah. twice. And the day before was none. <laughs> I'm keeping tabs. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's 10 or maybe five. Yeah, so it depend, <laughs> depends on the day. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday was incredibly busy. Next question. (laughs) I've recently moved to the Central Coast. Where do you get your hair done? I get my hair done at Alua, which is owned by Renee, but I see Erin, who just happened to be who they booked me in with for the first time, and I love Erin. She's really good at what she does. You're a bit of an Erin fan, aren't you? I am. Yeah. (laughs) Do you get it coloured or what do you do? Um, I get like a half head of highlights, which kind of gives off that balayage look. And then in between, I get a gloss. Okay. But Erin seems to be the colour queen, in my, in my opinion. <laughs> Are you going to have any more kids? No. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm pretty content with just summer. Um, what about when someone gets older, like <clears throat> four or five? Well, there's a bit of a story around it. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a bit of a story around it. So yeah. you, went, you went through IVF. I did. So I think for most women that have struggled with infertility would understand that you lose yourself a lot going through infertility, IVF, all of that. And um, at the moment, I'm not prepared to go on that journey again. And I think some is a really good addition to our family. The dynamic is great. Um, I think Matt's managing having summer as a baby. He doesn't do babies very well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, th- I think Matt and I would have a great marriage with just one baby. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason- I think two would be pushing it, but I haven't given Matt the final answer as to no because I'm not sure how I will feel in a couple of years. And because the reason we talked about IVF is because you've got one embryo... Yes, so we made a promise to one another that we would use all of our embryos. Um, Our first round completely failed. Our second round, we had three embryos. First embryo transfer failed. Second embryo is Little Miss Summer. And we still have a third embryo. So I'm a bit torn as to what to do with that. The option is if we don't use it, we can donate it to, um, what's it called, study. Um, like research? Yeah, research. Yeah. We can yeah. donate it to research. Yeah. So it just, we're still paying the fee to keep it there so I can make that decision in a few years. Yeah. 
I've left the decision to Tara. Yeah. Oh, no, there's been a lot of handing of, no, Tara, oh, I won't actually, handle yeah, it. Please don't have actually, another I, one. I don't, I don't want any more kids. Yeah. But, um, He's been managing me. I'm just me. not the best parent in the world. I try, but it's just not, it doesn't come very naturally to me. You don't but do I, a whole I, lot anyway, to be <coughs> honest, physically. No. Physically. I like providing, <laughs> yeah. but I just, I don't like, um, what would you call it? Like, you know, I'm just, I just, I'm, yeah, well, yeah, there, like yeah, you're a kid. Yeah. 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 Not, not, not like a hugger and a kisser and a, Let's go get breakfast and whatever <laughs> you like. You like solve problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's a good description. In, in a good way. It's pretty much what you do. Yeah. It's, it's like what you feel comfortable doing. Like, yeah. what did I say? I was talking to Liv this bit off topic. I was talking to Liv and she was like, because I had dinner with her family most night. And she's like, why don't we have dinner with you, your dad and Tara? And I was like, we got to book it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we got to book it in, and then like, you're like. She goes, it was so good the other time. I'm like, yeah, that was like a one-off. Usually when all the kids are around, it's like yeah. dad gets a bit fidgety. Everyone else gets fidgety. I was dying at that dinner, Jack. <laughs> we, we, we had dinner to meet Liv, Jack's new girlfriend, and Tara gets a bit excited every time we go out for dinner somewhere. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I was what? excited to meet her. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just don't like going out. No. And, um, it took a long time. Yeah, so we went to um, – and it was before Eric, and I said to Tara – do we really have to go? What if I get food poisoning? And, I can't? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we met her, but it was too late. I was yeah. getting so tired and yeah. the food was taking so long. Took forever. Yeah, and I was just like, can we just finish this? I started dinner? eating Tara's food. I didn't know yeah. it hurt. Yeah. I'm like sitting there smashing it out, <laughs> <laughs> offering it to live. I'm like, you know what, Tara's really good. <laughs> Tara's just looking at me like a dairy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's the best mothering <laughs> advice Matt has given you? Matt has given me, ooh, a housekeeper. That's, that's not mothering advice. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Am I answering the questions or yeah, are you? Yeah, sorry, go. Yeah. Um, I was going to be nice then. Now I'm, now I'm just going to say nothing. Absolutely nothing. Whatever he's told me to do, I do the opposite. <laughs> uh, is there any good advice or no? Oh, I haven't actually really like thought about that question. Um, I think... I apply it to motherhood is your whole thing's energy. I'm a very highly strung person. So I've really prepared myself prior pregnancy, during pregnancy to try to control my emotions <laughs> um, when I'm around summer, most in particularly. Like mm -hmm. I'm very cautious what environment she's in, the people she's around. Like I just don't want... I never want to be that mum that's yelling at her or losing my temper, um, which I'm sure is going to get harder as time goes on because she's going to push my patience. She's still only eight and a half months old. But I think that's one thing that you've instilled in me is to be weary of that. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. I really do. I think you've embraced it amazingly. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, has Tara tried any of the pods? What's her review on them? I have tried them. You I, can be honest. I think Mick is on another planet. <laughs> <laughs> and I would prefer to eat chocolate. <laughs> yeah. See, I love Mick. Yeah. And Mick's Tara, Tara great. doesn't not like Mick. No, no. He, he I just, like Mick. He, his eccentricness, she just can't. We, let's tell a quick story. Okay. We went down, first time Tara met Mick. Mick's like, come down, come down. I, I want to fill you in with the pods and things. And I'd already been eating them and Tara hadn't met him. And she, he come down and gave us a two-hour, two hours lecture, nonstop talking about angels, clouds, heaven, energy, light, this, that. It was more than that. I, ha I absolutely did not understand a single word in his vocabulary. <laughs> and, and she, like, we got in the car after. She looks at me and goes, He's freaking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it in some warehouse though with like it was the, in his sun, factory. the sun it was in his factory. through? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but you got You, you got are to, who you hang around, Jack. Yeah. Who taught you that? <laughs> Your dad seems to keep bringing you all these crazies. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you've got to understand him. Like he's a highly, you know, focused, uh, I, I'd say he's like bordering on genius with gut health stuff, but. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> What's your approach on alcohol eating like Matt? Alcohol eating like Matt, oh, eating like Matt saunas and ice baths. Um, alcohol, I'm all on board. I rarely drink. 
I kind of really wasn't a huge drinker leading up to before meeting Matt. I obviously had my, you know, 18 to 21 year old years where we had a lot of crazy nights with my friends. Um, she has an alter ego. Mm. I do have an alter ego. Apparently her name's Kylie. I don't handle my alcohol very well, I'll be honest. <laughs> I tend to get very angry and fired up or I'll be the complete opposite. I'll be really happy and like as most people are when, when they're drinking. She's the girl getting kicked out. She's the five foot noisy, angry <laughs> yeah. girl getting kicked out of the nightclub by a six foot five bouncer. I do. I have been trying kicked to out fight him. a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I just don't like that side of me. Mm. And I, oh, that's not to say that I won't ever, dr- I do drink here and there. Like I've got my, a lot of my, I'm 30 this year. So I've got a lot of my friends 30th this year. Um, but I just more or less choose my surroundings, who I'm around. I try to premeditate how much I will drink that day. And I also don't want to be looking after summer with a hangover now. So mm. she's my first priority. And I do have that muscle in the brain to think, no, let's stop here because I don't want to feel like that the next day. It's funny, Tara's friends are getting married. My friends are dying. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't finished that question yet. Oh, yeah, keep going. Um, food. I definitely agree with Matt on all levels with his diet and everything that he eats. I do think he needs to eat meat, which he doesn't eat because his iron levels are low. And I do know you can get iron through other sources. But um, I have not gone down that journey yet. I like to binge eat. It's how – like I eat for pleasure. Matt eats for fuel and – I don't really enjoy eat. Like I like going out for meals and I don't ever want to be on a strict meal plan. I go through phases if I'll have chocolate or ice cream or lollies, but that's something I haven't gone down that path yet. Maybe one day when I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you're going to get your blood. I mean, you volunteer. Oh, I think we've got to help people understand I don't push anything on you apart no. from a little bit of advice here or there if you want it. But um, you came. You said the other day you want to get your bloods done. And I thought, oh, that's good. So it'll probably take two years for you to get around to doing. But yeah, but that's, just, m- that's I think more it's a because of how it? I'm feeling. Like yeah. entering motherhood. Thank God, summer's been a good sleeper. But energy levels are probably not where they need to be. Mm. So that's now something I need to think about and I do know that that a lot is and anxiety I've got postpartum anxiety which is very common so I think before I were to go on medication which is what they prescribe a lot of the time you need to start off with am I exercising which I'm not am I eating well which I'm not um I do tend to go the natural route before meds yeah so I'm actually having my first PT this morning. That's good. With Ellie at, what is her gym? Tara has her own gym. Elevate she, Training at King Kumba. Yes, I have my own she, gym Tara now. Tara has her own gym, but she goes somewhere else to get trained. <laughs> 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 you didn't set one up in here for her. Yeah, she's got a gym yeah, here. She's got her own personal gym at home. I'm and then she's got a Ellie factory and then now <laughs> she goes to someone else's gym. Because I need motivation. <laughs> I've heard Elevate's good. Yeah. It's the one next to the coffee warehouse, right? Yeah, and there's yeah. a lot of it's like a lot of mum group. Yeah, they do heaps of yeah. they do the big laps around the car park. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. 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 You see Tara running through King yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might. You might. I used to do CrossFit and I like that style of training. I tried Pilates. I did like Pilates, but I just feel like I need to get in there and kind of like more aggressively get an exercise. Yeah. Like a workout done. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Um. <laughs> What's the, what is the best way an older man can ask out a younger woman? <laughs> oh, um, I'm probably not the best person to ask. I have like a huge sleaze bag radar. Like, okay, I shouldn't say sleaze bag. <laughs> I like even when I'm out with the girls, like. You give no one nothing. I give no one nothing. And it's just, it's just, it takes a a lot for me to, I don't know, speak back to a person. Matt went through a friend (laughs) of mine. Mm -hmm. So that's how he approached me. Otherwise I probably would have never responded to him if he directly messaged me. I don't know what to, I think 
don't come in too strong. I think a lot of men use one-liners or they – I think like most girls have a a big intuition and we can straight away tell when a guy's being genuine or just trying to get in their pants or Mm. I think if you're genuine – you will come across that way. Yeah. Next question, Jack. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that's not really a great answer. That was a good answer. Was it? Yeah, it's okay. fine. Yeah, I think, I think you're right with the intuition part. Yeah, I don't think it matters with age. I think if a girl is interested but, in But you, let's make it clear, you weren't into older guys. Not one bit. Like even you're a bit you, that's yuck. Yeah, I think I was in denial a lot with you as well. Yeah. Like I knew, I said to you the other day, the first time that we met, we had an instant undeniable connection Mm. and I knew from that moment that I would know you for the rest of my life but Mm. I didn't know what place you would be in my life. And, you know, to be honest, it probably took a couple of years for me to accept that I was romantically in love with you. I think there's a few questions around that as well. Okay. Okay. Next question. What do you love most about Matt? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> that, well, You're just scared what I'm going to say. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, no, okay. I married you for no reason. Um, My kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I probably wouldn't have found you as appealing if you didn't have kids. Yeah. I liked that you had kids. Mm. And six of them in different yeah. ages. They're, they're pretty awesome kids too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the dynamic has definitely changed. Jackson's burying his head right now. Yeah, I know. Jackson's not even paying attention. I'm trying to find the next question. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's his ADD. Yeah. Um, the most thing I love about Matt. Oh, there's lots of things. I love that he's very. he's a very caring person. He doesn't show it how most people would show it. Like you said, he's not very emotionally nurturing. Um, But he definitely makes me feel special. And I think he's a kind person. (laughs) (laughs) Next question. No. (laughs) Um, (laughs) All right, will you shut that one down? No, no, no. (laughs) I even said to him last night, don't interrupt me and speak over me because you do it all the time. It's just that question. Because you're uncomfortable. Matt can't sit within an uncomfortable feeling. No. He's too scared I'm going to say something. Should we take turns saying what we love about Dad? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Let's take turns. Turn it off. (laughs) Um, I'd love to hear gorgeous Tara discuss for other mums out there. Um, We discussed the guilt. Sorry, it's a longer question. The guilt we have as new mums trying to balance and juggle our children, our homes, partners, career, exercises, socialising. What are suggestions to create a balanced routine where everyone is happy? That's a really great question. Um, I'll try and answer that really well. I, I do have to say, though, I am very fortunate. Like, I have a good support system. Um, we have a housekeeper three days a week our groceries get delivered. So that's de- not everyone can afford a housekeeper, but I would say get your groceries delivered. Do It took a lot, like my mum now has summer as well every single Wednesday for me. I know that a lot of people won't be able to have that, but that in itself, I got a bit mad when it was even suggested because I felt like Matt was implying that I wasn't coping. Um, but I think it's a hard thing to accept help and I, I definitely accept as much help as I can because it's not – I mean, I think Matt's used it. It might not be the right, like, analogy, but it's not a sprint. Like, it's a marathon and I don't want to burn out or feel overwhelmed. Like, I do my – I know that I – like, I've been learning a lot over the last few years about my emotional control. So I think I don't ever want to let myself get to a space where I'm overwhelmed – So I do accept a lot of help. Um, I think I've been told by quite a few mums. I take a lot of advice on as well. You don't have to use it all, but I always listen to people's advice. The first two years I've been told are the hardest on the marriage or on your partnership, being a mum, you know, you're sleep deprived. 
it's a, it's a whole new world. I think you definitely have an identity crisis. You don't know who you are anymore. I think you lose a lot of friends. You realise who's real, who's not. And sometimes that's just a natural progression as well because, like, I was having this conversation with Matt the other day. It's not that you're, you don't like your friends any less, but you're just on different paths. And I do naturally gravitate towards my friends that have kids now just because it's we have more of a not understanding but the conversation is I think easier because as a mum a lot of time all you want to do is talk about your baby um managing all I think definitely having a supportive partner is number one like I know Matt he's not hands-on physically but anything that I say that I need he will do his best to provide we do butt a bit head to head recently because I think what I have needed is emotional support, which is just something that Matt doesn't easily provide. Um, so I think knowing your partner, having real expectations of what they can give you and what they can't, accepting help. Um, I think even if in those moments each day that someone can have your baby or they're sleeping and you can put them in the carrier, go for a walk for 10 minutes. That was a big thing that my midwife recommended to me is make sure you get outside at least for 10 minutes every single day because it is a huge toll on your mental health. I hope I've answered that. I think also the thing being with myself is I had hindsight. So before Tara had the baby, I said it's going to be very important that you're able to focus and have time to renew your energy yeah like you so there's support around you and you had a shop yes and you chose you chose i suggested shut the shop down yes shut the shop down so you can completely focus and then my job was to provide support around you as you needed it yeah that's that's what i said to you that i think was because you hadn't been a mum yet no but i could see that the amount of pressure that gets put on women especially with people like me because i'm not i'm not making i'm not changing nappies and things like this and it's but i was like we need to make sure that if you need to breathe or you need to renew your energy you've got time to do that because your mental stability is the main thing definitely Mm. yeah i think um i think it was a big thing that i helped you i'm not i i was really focused on making sure that you could navigate this feeling the best you can Yes. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say something in that and I've forgotten now. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. It was whilst you were speaking. Yeah. Um, oh, I was just going to say, I think – no, I've completely forgotten. Right. <laughs> that's It'll the, come back. That's the mum brain It'll coming come out. Back. Next question, Jack. <laughs> what is the age gap? 22 years. Were people close to you immediately accepting of the age gap? Not a lot of people knew that Matt and I were involved the way that we were for a lot of the time. Matt was going through a divorce. Um, So I think it was that as well as me being in denial. I, I think Matt as well can agree that he did but I also isolated myself I did not tell anyone that I was involved with Matt why denial um I didn't want it affecting the process of Matt's divorce I think he was still you know he was separated living separately but there was a bit of deceit going on whether he would be going back, whether he wouldn't. It was a very messy time for both of us. I handled it very poorly. He did. Yeah, I did. It was a very not good – I would have done things way different. Yeah. And and I think also like um, – yeah, like Tara was a lot younger. It was like – and it was a messy and – you know, then like, we might have also a little bit of shame. Yeah, shame as well. Just 
And I, I think I didn't really even work myself out till I was almost 50 anyway. Like I was just a bit of a, you know. Well, I didn't speak to you for a year. Yeah, <laughs> so let's yeah. just put it like that we way. We broke up for a year, like we were together for a while then broke up for a year and then, but I always kept coming back around to wanting to be with Tara. So it was like, it was more like we weren't just together and then went off like that. We were sort of together, it was a big mess. Yeah. Then I sorted things out my side. She went to Melbourne, she come back again and we broke up for a year. And then... My family had absolutely, go back to the question, my family had absolutely no idea, including mum. Mum knew Matt as my previous boss. Mum followed Matt on social media. She really liked him. Anytime she'd bring him up, I'm like, don't talk about him. <laughs> yeah. um, my friends Your family were, were very good. Huh? Your family were actually quite good. They were amazing. There, there, was, so, some we- there was some weird vibes, but... Oh, I think they were cautious, like they were a bit yeah. concerned considering. Skep- they were a bit sceptical. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I was, it was just expected. Yeah. Yeah. Like your uncle, Mark and Jackie and like I, I, went, and I went to a family Christmas. So I don't do family things, right? Like as in when I grow up, like I didn't go to, I didn't have family Christmases and th- with you kids and stuff we do Christmas, but I wasn't mm. a big like myself, I'm not talking about yeah. you guys. Like I just didn't grow up with that. And Tara goes, we just started, I don't know if everyone knew or something. We had just got engaged. Just got engaged. And then I hadn't really met anyone like of their family. No, so my family knew of Matt when my grandma shared the photo of us getting engaged. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then so Tara goes, oh, we've got to go to the family thing at Christmas. She's got a big family. And like I went there and there's like 50 people there. <laughs> and I'm there just going, you know, and Tara's like the young – um, niece and like she's got all these uncles and <laughs> like one's like a master in karate or something like and I'm like a bit scared of him and like all these things martial arts and he gives you nothing like just looks at you yeah. and like, <laughs> and then, you in particular <laughs> yeah yeah and I was just like so uncomfortable I can't tell you I was sitting there I just sat in a chair I didn't move I the whole time I can imagine yeah. yeah but they were also very welcoming they were welcoming. very nice they were very good they, they have been the whole time they've been actually good I think a couple of her uncles have been very sceptical and but still nice at the same time but I think that's justified yeah you know like you know, this guy is older, he's got been divorced twice, he's got six kids. And I think a lot of people have preconceived notions of you until they meet you and they're like, yeah. oh, he's a nice Definitely. guy. Definitely. Yeah, and yeah. I think they were wondering... What oh, my intentions were. Yeah, what your yeah. intentions were, especially considering we had just gotten engaged and just met in mm. their eyes. Mm. It was very daunting for me. I had yeah. to sit there for hours. It was so bad. It wasn't that bad. It was bad. Well, you're not me. <laughs> I was like sitting there like sweating under my arms, just like not moving. Just sat there. Yeah. Would you rather go through that again or go talk again in front of people? Like talk. Talk. Yeah, that was the worst <laughs> ever. <laughs> Keep going. Um, best advice for my partner living with an agent and tips to have tips to having a great marriage. Can you read it a bit more clearly? Best advice for my partner living with so, no, so yeah, that's a good sense. one. Best advice for my partner, living with an agent and tips to having a great marriage. Uh, uh, that, that's, yeah, it is a hard one because I think it depends how well performing or busy they are at work as an agent. Like an agent, your phone you're kind of on call 24-7 as a sales agent in real estate. Matt having, you know, such a large business and then a very high-performing team within that business, his phone never stops. <laughs> um, it is hard to get quality time in there and I think it comes with a lot of understanding on my part where we'll be mid-conversation <laughs> and Matt will pick up and answer the phone and, um, it has been a bit of an argument between us, I won't lie, because sometimes I don't feel – I feel, oh, I'm not important. Um, I think it works both ways. I think you being the partner that's not in real estate, it also helped that I did work in real estate as well, so I kind of understood a bit better. But I think it works both ways. I have to be understanding that 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 is – 
you know, what provides our life. That's what's really important to Matt as well. Work, building the business. He's, you know, as well as Trev, the head of the team. Um, But on his part, I think he has learnt over time as well to choose when is the appropriate time to answer a phone call. Like if I'm confiding in him about something important and he picked up the phone, he would know I wouldn't speak to him for two days. Mm. Whereas he... I think he's a bit more selective now when he'll stop giving me time. I think also, yes, I agree. I think also we are not very controlling of each other. No. Like you give me a lot of freedom. I do. And a lot. I give you a lot of freedom. That's like it. you can do anything you want at yeah. any time when whoever like we go where I don't ask where you're going and things like this like but I think there's the odd time you you, I think you just like to be heard. So when you're talking, you like me to pay attention yeah. and listen. I yeah. think that's the most important thing here It's with that I've learnt from you. Yeah. And so now I'm acutely aware. If you're talking, I listen as mm-hmm. much as I can. Some, Which is normal. Sometimes you... That, that's usually how conversations work. Sometimes, Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but with an agent, you're always thinking about people and things yeah. and reactively like trying to take care of people emotionally. So I think that's the little things are the things that you value most now. Like if you're talking, I've got to listen and, you know, you know, sometimes I'm not the best at it, but I try. But the rest of my life, you just let me do whatever I need to do. Pretty much. Yeah, within yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah. How does she feel about your lifestyle? Does she ever feel resentful towards your routine slash caring for summer? Not caring for summer. I... Matt was very upfront with the type of dad that he would be. To be honest, I was very surprised when she was first born how helpful he was because I had even said to him mentally I had prepared to be physically a single mum. With his – it's been a huge thing because Matt's never ending. Like he – he – he – he gets obsessed with things and then he'll do that for a year or two or six months and then he'll change and it'll be something new. At the moment, it's, you know, this very strict morning and night routine of the ice bath, the sauna, the red light therapy bed, the cardio. It's a lot, especially when I'm so hands-on with summer. But um, I think I've learned a, a lot with Matt which has been hard for me to accept because I really take it as being so self-centred when I'm taking on such a huge role, is that he needs to do those things for him to then perform his best during the day. And then it's, it's almost like I've had to bite the bullet with it, I guess, because if Matt doesn't do it, he's so grumpy and he's just not himself. He can't perform. Things don't flow in his day. Like... It's just almost a non-negotiable over anything else and I've had to bite the bullet and just accept that that's the way it is. It's not to say that I don't support him doing it because I. it's not like he's going and gambling every afternoon or having beers at the, at the pub with his mates. Like it's all for his health benefits to soothe his mind. Um, and we do have a, a – like I do it in the morning and then you have your time in the shower and things like that where I have summer. A shower isn't a break. <laughs> no. Let's make I that mean, clear. No, you said, to me, <laughs> you said to me you just want to be able to focus and get ready in the morning. Yes. So I do my thing in the morning from like five and then from seven you do your thing till quarter – eight or eight seven thirty seven ten (laughs) (laughs) let's be real here (laughs) yeah well i try but if you said to me i want to do a sauna every morning i would make you would make it happen yeah that yeah what's important to you i i'm very aware of and i i can i I, as long as you get your things in first yeah exactly yeah so as long as i can because i think it's i think it keeps me steady i think in a marriage or a relationship they say there's the three phases it's yeah. the honeymoon stage, the power struggle phase, and what's the phase called after that? Um, the, I don't know, it's deeper, like the deeper the love deeper phase. The deeper love where through. you, so I think Matt and I are still a little bit, I think we have a great marriage, to be completely clear. I really do. Like, I think we have a lot of trust. We don't control one another. Like, we've both got a lot of freedom. We both deeply care about one another. I think we know each other pretty, like, very inside and out, maybe more mm. than the other person knows the other person. 
But I think we are a little bit still in the power struggle phase. Yeah. And Matt's not going to budge on it. Matt is the most port- important person to <laughs> him. Well, Summer's right up there. <laughs> <laughs> but you just won't budge on things. No, I don't. Yeah. So it's if you get everything you get done, then I get the best out of you. And I was actually speaking to my nan about it, you know, because that's back in the olden days. Mm. Um, and she said, and my therapist, <laughs> she said, women will always give more. Yeah. For a successful marriage, women always give more. And being to a point a feminist has been a hard thing to gulp. But I do want a happy marriage and mm. I think that's me changing my expectations and yeah. I, I want a family with Samar. And, mm. I know. think if I wasn't aware of you, you wouldn't put up with it. No. You wouldn't. Like it sounds like, oh, yeah, it's all about Matt. But it, and it is partly, but yeah. it's like um, I, I think you're not the sort of person that would just put up with someone just taking – no, I absolutely just would taking not. taking full advantage and just putting you to the... Like, I, I think you... And it's only what I see. Yeah. Because you're a very strong-minded person. I am. Yeah. You don't oh, take, and I'm, you I'm don't, not easy to be with. You don't take a backward step. No, I know. If you feel something's not right, you don't take a backward step. You and I step. are both difficult characters. Yeah. But I think you know my intentions are good. Yes. And that, I, I think you being... It's just that you're not a conventional style husband or father. Mm. I already knew that. Mm. And I think you get swept up in, oh, well, this is how my friend's relationship works and how their motherhood is. But I'm, I can't, com- I, I just, I can't complain. It's just been bits and pieces where I have struggled emotionally recently. There's, there's been a lot of things that have happened, mm. you know, in both of, well, in our family. Mm. Um, it's just, be, it's been a harder shift into my motherhood. But thank goodness Summer is such a good baby. She's a good baby. She honestly, I couldn't have asked for a, a better baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like this is the last one. All the other ones kind of overlap besides yeah. this one. Um, top tips on managing a blended family dynamic. I've got two questions at the end I want to ask you. Okay. A dynamic with multiple ex-partners and kids. Oh, that's a really hard one. And I really didn't want that one coming up because I'm probably not in the best frame of mind to answer it, to be completely honest. Um, Blended families are hard, very hard. Um, Like I said earlier, though, it was part of the appeal of Matt. I loved that he – I love that he has previous kids. It does get hard in the sense of – and there is an elaboration to the saying I've been told, but blood is always sicker than water – And I feel like it was really great that I was in Bay and Flora's life from a young age. So I'm almost just accepted straight away as I've always been there almost as time goes on. That's not the case clearly, but um, I also am acutely aware I am not their mum. I don't try to mother them. And I think I have a reasonable relationship with them. Like there's no eh. Yet. And Shelley. I think and you and Shelley. Shelley are getting on good. Yeah, Shelley and I, uh, we're not friends, but yeah. we're civil and I think we have, have respect for one another. Mm. I can pick up the phone call Shelley. And I think we're very supportive of Shelley as a mum. We yes. think she's an amazing mum. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, I think it was harder with older stepchildren, especially when, I mean, Jackson, you're only five years younger than me. Um, yeah. The... The lines can be blurred between friendship and stepmom, I guess. That is technically what I am to you guys in your life. Um, I think it hasn't helped that you and Karina aren't civil with one another. So there's a constant... Divide. Divide, yeah. So that's probably been even more so in the later years. Um hard for you but also for me I I think I feel I do get a bit um I wouldn't say hated on um, you could probably say hated on it goes in and out by association but also I feel like too when when you're friends with someone if they do something wrong to you you'll forgive them if they do something else wrong or there's a I wouldn't say something wrong because I honestly don't feel like I've ever done anything wrong but something that they're not in agreement with and then you forgive and then again, you forgive, 
and then you kind of reach a point where you're like, okay, I've had enough, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. That's almost like where I, like how I get positioned with the older kids. Um, whereas with you, you're their dad. It's unconditional love. They will always forgive you. Um, that's just kind of how it works in most families, of course, given if there's, you know, no physical abuse or things like that. Um, yeah, that's what I mean by, what is it? Um, blood is always sicker than water. Yeah. So that, that's definitely been challenging. Would I recommend a blended family? No, I wouldn't if you can avoid it. <laughs> um, it's just a work in progress. It's a constant work in progress. So we'll see as time goes on. So I've got two questions. One, do you have any regrets marrying an older man? No. No? I don't. I don't think I would – oh, look, there's one in a million in everything. I naturally gravitate towards older people. Even a lot of my friends are older. Um, I don't always – like I said, I was a bit in denial with how I felt about you. Love is love. I'm definitely a big believer in that. I don't ever feel I age gap. I truly don't. I think um, I'm not. I'm not I think even. We did in the beginning, especially yeah, walking, we did walking in the down beginning. the street and things like that. You could, I that think was people a, were like, it was a big thing to overcome the judgment. That is why. I mean, and there is no. Um, I hope people don't take offence. I don't let people follow me on social media. Um, a lot of agents and uh, real estate agents tend to try to follow me and other random people that I don't know. I, I won't accept because it was very traumatic when you and I announced our engagement and I was not on private. People are nasty mm. and they say really nasty things and it did affect me day to day. I don't have thick skin as much as I come across at times that I do, but I don't. I know. People would write nasty things on my TikTok and you'd be fighting with them yeah. on my TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> so, do it about anything. Yeah. And I'm like, Tara, just leave them. Don't worry about it's it. it's like, mind your own business. would be up all business. night writing things back to people who write a negative comment. I'm like, don't worry about I've it. I've seen, yeah. But yeah. If, it's, if it's not affecting <laughs> their life, why comment? <clears throat> just people. People get bored. Yeah, they do. And it really is. It's it's unhappy people. That mm. say. So, um, no, I have no regrets marrying you. Um, I've said to you before, I wouldn't do our journey all over again if I could guarantee still the, out, the same outcome, mm. if that makes sense. Like I would have just stayed very separate from you until the time around when we got engaged. Yeah. Um, and lived my life a little bit more, not so angst. <laughs> yeah, you probably gave up a little bit there. I did. Of your own life. I did. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't regret it. And I, yeah, I think I don't really relate a lot to, I look, I, I actually go out like just during the day or whatever and if I see guys my age or whatever there isn't that same appeal to me anymore now that I have been with an older guy like it's mm. almost like oh they're a child <laughs> <laughs> it is weird I've got one more question okay. before we end um what's Tara shooting for like what's your goals what do you you know what's where do you have your sights set what does life look like for you moving forward um well my biggest what do they call it aspiration no, my biggest um, – oh, losing the word. The biggest thing to me is happiness and peace. Mm. I don't really want – like I've just come, especially like being a mum, I just don't want toxicity or negativity in my life. Like sometimes it's inevitable, but as much as I can control it, I don't want it in my life. So that's a huge, a huge thing that I'm striving for. Um, honestly, I – a bit younger, always wanted a career. I was saying this to you the other day. At the moment, I don't want to be one of those – there's nothing wrong with that, but I do feel like if you devote your entire life to your children, they, they do get to an age where they've grown up and you need to find yourself again. And I, I still always want to remain me and Tara and, and do things that are for me. But at the moment, my big, my biggest priority is being a mum and that's a huge goal of mine, to always be the best possible mum that I can to Summer so that she has a very stable upbringing and life and she's, 
you know, emotionally stable and she becomes a kind and happy person. Well, I think you're doing that. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, Tara. That's all right. Thank you for your question asking, Jackson. Except no, I can't read half the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll get you on in the next couple of years. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see if anyone be nasty to me. No Karens, please. Just no Karens. <laughs> Bye. Bye.